All right, let's paint a tank. It's been quite a while since I painted any armor, and so we're going to be doing that today with Warlord Games Russian T-70 tank. I've only bought one uh, Warlord tank previously, and I was not uh, too impressed with the quality of it, but uh, this little guy is actually very nice, very sharp detail, and um, very little cleanup work. Uh, after the primer, we start with an undercoat. Uh, it's a mix of, um, if I can remember here, Vallejo model color olive drab mixed with some Vallejo camo olive green. This is basically just an undercoat to get us kind of in the ballpark of where we're going to be for our uh, first base coat color. When it comes to getting exact matches for historical colors, usually uh, you don't find too much luck just going off of the labels, off of paints. Um, German gray, you know, not very, or Panzer gray, might not be uh, the exact same color that was used on Panzer tanks, for example. Uh, Russian armor, though, from Vallejo model color is actually uh, pretty close on the button. Uh, however, they've changed the name of it, and actually uh, I kind of grabbed something similar, and it turned out to be uh, the new name of the color, which I didn't realize at the time, but uh, long story short, we are base coating currently with uh, camo olive green, uh, which again, pretty accurate color for Russian armor. And then for a single highlight, mixing in some Vallejo Game Color Dead Flesh to our olive green and just hitting a few spots here and there. I'm going to be relying mainly on the weathering to get all of our contrast, so I'm not going overboard with the highlighting here. To the paint desk now, and we're doing a little bit of edging on the tank, and we are using the same mix that we did previously, uh, which is the olive green color mixed again with the game color dead flesh, and just uh, using the sides of the brush and pick out some of the edges so they stand out better. Uh, you can also dry brush this if you want, uh, but I do want a little bit of a, a cleaner look for myself. Uh, and also, since it's such a small tank, it's pretty easy to do with the brush. Just takes a minute or two. Next, the fun part of painting tanks. The road wheels. Uh, the rubber portion of the road wheels, to be exact. Always so much fun. Uh, for this, I'm using Panzer Aces Dark Rubber which uh, I know the Panzer Aces colors are not available everywhere, but you can do uh, make up a similar color, just mix um, some browns with like a dark gray, I'd say like German gray mixed with a little bit of, uh, even khaki probably would work, uh, but basically just try to get a, a worn, uh, war well weathered rubber color. Uh, we don't want to go with just straight black for this. For the tracks, I am using a mix of Panzer Aces Dark Rust mixed with that same color we used on the road wheels, Dark Rubber. Uh, there's a lot of different theories, ways you could paint tracks. Uh, I always like going towards a bit more the brown route, um, just to add a bit more color to a fairly simple paint scheme on a tank. Um, you could paint them different, there's various different ways you could paint them, uh, go more of the metal route or even lighter colors, more dust ingrained into them. Just remember they are uh, very dark steel, uh, but they're also extremely dirty. Um, if you do go the metallic route, just do very faint metallic. Obviously, uh, polished steel or even silver is uh, out of the question here. On to the weathering stage, starting off with the chips. And for that, I'm using Vallejo Model Color Camo Black Brown. And to simulate the chips, I'm just using a, a bit pulled off of a, a sanding pad. Basically, it's kind of like a scotch bright pad. Just uh, ripped off a chunk, a pair of tweezers, and just carefully stippling the color onto the tank. I'm trying not to overdo it. Uh, a lot of people have the impression that tanks are basically rust buckets. But however, they were actually fairly well taken care of. They got dinged up and 
uh, bashed around pretty well, but also uh, tanks on the field were routinely painted um, because rust you know, leads to uh, wear and tear on the tank and you don't want your tank falling apart from rust. So um, you can go a bit extreme on the rust you, you know, if you want, but uh, having a pretty clean tank is not that unusual. Next, to show some more shallow chipping, uh, going back to our previous mixture of dead flesh and olive green, uh, this time a little bit more heavily on the dead flesh, but repeating the process as we did before, a little scotch bright pad and just uh, stippling it over the tank uh, to simulate, you know, lighter scratches on the tank here and there. Uh, kind of just, it's basically the same process that we did with the, uh, the rust chips before. Unfortunately, the kit does not come with any decals, but fortunately, I have tons of decals, and I did have some proper ones for a Russian tank. Uh, this is definitely optional. Uh, a lot of Russian tanks did not have any markings whatsoever. Uh, however, I wanted to add a little bit of color to the tank. So standard decal process, gloss coat first, uh, decals applied, press out any air bubbles, and then once it's completely dry, one or two gloss coats afterwards to seal the edges. One mistake I did make, I should have put the decals on the left side of the turret because I forgot about the air intake on the right side of the tank, which kind of obscures the markings and realistically would not be put there. Once the decals are set, I gave the entire tank uh, a nice coat with an acrylic gloss, let that dry, and now we can really start adding more weathering techniques to it. For starters, we are using AK Interactive's Dark Brown Wash, and this is mainly going in any recesses, panel line areas, and especially along the uh, road wheels and the tracks as well. After around 10 minutes or so, the enamel wash is dry and we can rub it off. Comes off nice and easily because of the cloth coat. So just taking off all the excess, leaving the wash just in the recesses. And in areas where uh, the plates are trying to do the best to uh, wipe off the wash in an up and down motion. So uh, we get streaks that help add to the weathering look. We got our dark wash on now, which helps to uh, represent shadow and recess and all that. Now we need to add a bit more enamel washes to more represent just plain old dirt. And for that, I am using, appropriately enough, uh, Kursk Earth enamel wash. Uh, applying this in um, just a few areas here and there, mainly, uh, I'm, not, I'm doing a little bit on the tops of the tank, the turret and the, the body of the tank. Uh, but also down the sides as well, so we get a nice streaking effect. And like before, removing the excess with a Q-tip. However, we're doing with a lighter touch this time, uh, removing less of the wash. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is more akin to uh, sharpening the wash, uh, shaping the lines that I just did. And so um, keeping more of it on and yeah, just defining it eventually. That's the word I'm looking for, just defining the wash. I recently picked up some new uh, Vallejo environmental paints and decided to give them a try here. Uh, first starting off with Vallejo's uh, thick mud, European mud. And I was initially quite disappointed uh, when opening up and realizing it was just uh, painting gravel like it appeared. Uh, however, after applying it and letting it dry, it's not that bad. Uh, it's actually a bit more than just paint and gravel. There is some, what I believe is uh, acrylic gel mixed inside of it as well, because there's definitely a, a glue type substance mixed in. Could be white glue as well, but I'm pretty sure it's acrylic gel. Um, so just using a, a short brush that you don't care about, don't use your good brushes for this, and just applying it in the uh, recesses above the road wheels and the wheel wells, 
and just a little bit on the front of the tank and all that. Um, when you're working with mud effects, uh, I think it's better to go lighter than super heavy. Uh, yeah, tanks can pick up a lot of mud, but it's gonna they're gonna lose it quite quickly because of all the turning machinery. Since the thick mud worked so well, I decided to try their splash mud. Uh, this stuff, not so great. Uh, again, it is paint mixed with some sort of medium. I'm not sure exactly what, but my thinking is splash mud should be very thin uh, so you can do splashes, um, which A, would be lighter in color than thick mud, which this is not. They're both European, and the splash mud is darker. And B, it's... It's gel and transparent, so when you apply it, it's actually barely visible at all. And just the way I'm thinking, splash mud should not be like that. Um, splash mud should be more opaque, uh, not transparent. And actually, after it dried, it was virtually invisible. So not caring for the splash mud, Vallejo. At this point, the tank has been flat varnished and cured, and adding a bit of extra detail right now, the headlamp on the tank has been uh, was sculpted uh, hollow, meaning there's no lens on it. Kind of surprised they didn't just do it as a, a solid piece. However, if you do want to add a bit of extra detail to your tank, it makes it super easy. A uh, little dollop of uh, epoxy glue applied with a toothpick, and boom, we have a headlamp. And finally, my favorite step, the rub and buff with graphite powder. Oh, I always do this way too much. Uh, a little bit of graphite powder just applied with a finger. A little bit here and there just on a couple of the edges of the tank, uh, the tip of the barrel for a, a powder burn look, and also on the tracks as well, just to give the idea of areas where uh, are going to get constantly rubbed and the paint's going to come off. So um, it does add a nice little subtle sheen to those areas. And again, it's really easy to overdo it, but I don't know why. I really just like the look of it. And there we go. We are all done. Could have done a lot more to the tank. However, uh, I haven't painted armor in quite a while. And uh, unfortunately, when I do so many different genres, some of my... Uh, painting knowledge kind of escapes me and I forget things, so, but this is good practice. Uh, I didn't, again, don't want to go too overboard. Uh, it's a fun little project, uh, definitely a nice little quality kit from Warlord Games. Uh, one thing I would like to point out that I didn't notice until uh, recording this, uh, if you notice little tiny specks on the road wheels, well, since I didn't like the splash mud from Vallejo, I went back and applied some of the thinned thick mud around the road wheels instead, uh, but because I thinned it, the gravel in the mud uh, got exposed and they used white bits of gravel or whatnot in that thick mud, so that's why it looks like snow or ashes on some portions of the wheel. I uh, did have to go back and fix that afterwards, but uh, wanted to show you that. Uh, I do like the product, uh, but it uh, definitely you can't thin it. And also, I would stay away from the splash mud. Uh, it's one of those pro products that, yeah, you could definitely make your own, but having it ready-made and ready to go is uh, always very handy. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed our adorable little tank. And see you again soon.